products these days are complicated. Your cell phone is a supercomputer connected to a vast web of services. Amazon is a service that's built on top of many other businesses. And a modern online game like World of Warcraft contains combat systems, progression ladders, a virtual world, and an in-game economy all working together. So as a product creator, how do you approach building something that has so many different moving parts? In this video, you'll learn five timeless system design principles that can help you bring any complex product or service to life. Here's Raf Koster, lead designer on Ultima Online and Star Wars Galaxies, sharing his practical wisdom about how to bring a system to life from the ground up. The first step is a bit of analysis. So you've got a goal, you've got a product goal in mind. It almost certainly means that there's objects in there that people are dealing with. It might be, I want to create this thing. It might be, I want to arrange these things. Wh wh whatever that is. Make yourself a, a list of what are the things. Like, what are the objects? What are the components that are going into this mix? And clump them together by type. If it's, oh, I want to arrange these things, you might not need to know what all of the kinds of things are. You just need to know things are something I arrange. In the game World of Warcraft, for example, Objects include armor and weapons, which boost your item level, and consumables, which boost your health and other stats. Ask yourself, what are the numbers that move around? Identify those. Depending on what domain of systems design you're working in, these may have different terms. In economic systems, we call them currencies. Currencies are a number that moves up and down. In other systems, we, act, we might call them our resources. The difference is where things aren't fungible, they're objects. Currencies are literally numbers. They're gauges that move up and down. And sometimes they only go up. Sometimes they go up and you spend them and they come back down. Identify what those are. The numbers in World of Warcraft include your reputation, job skill level, item level, and stats like strength, stamina, dexterity, and intelligence. Now these stats can go up and down, but your experience points will only go up. These are the bones and sinew of a system, okay? <laughs> the, these are the things that really make a system work. And one last thing, what are the things a user can do? The verbs, the inputs, the buttons. And you make a little list of those. The verbs in World of Warcraft include fetching items, killing monsters, farming gold, and practicing a skill like fishing or leatherworking. Each of these actions or verbs will change your numbers, the things that you can see that tell you how you're doing. Right off the bat, if in your process these lists are long, take a step back. I'll use a rule of thumb here. Think in threes. If you have more than three objects, more than three numbers, and more than three verbs, you might be thinking at the wrong level of granularity. It doesn't mean that there might not be more numbers or objects or whatever in the system, but it means you're trying to boil the ocean. The highest level of a car actually only has, I go from point A to point B, how far along am I? How fast am I going? Which direction am I pointing? I'm done, three things, right? Like it's small. You go deep into a car and sure, now I've got fuel, oil, and I have all these things interacting. But any given subcomponent, you can probably look at it and get it in that realm of three. Three is just a good number for us to wrap our head around, which is why I suggest as you plan, that helps you think at these different levels of granularity. Car speed will in fact decompose into lots of systems with lots more numbers. But at one level of design, it's just one of, one of three. And then think about how you can model it. It doesn't mean implementing. It could just mean thinking about what happens, walking through the flows. Okay, so if I add more water to the tub, the level will go up to here. Oh, okay, right? You can walk through that. You can build it in Excel. If you have engineers, you can get them to build a simple toy version of it. And what you're looking for is where are the places where the system's internal feedback causes numbers to go off in various directions. And you ask yourself the questions, things like, what happens if this number keeps going up forever? 
what happens if this number goes to nothing? Like those are your first cut question. What happens if I run out of this kind of thing? What if the system causes this number to go beyond what I expect? In a bathtub, it turns out, you know all bathtubs have two drains on them. Most people don't think about it, but all bathtubs have two drains. There's a second drain located between the bottom and the faucet, so that when a tub gets to a certain point, it starts draining out of the side, right? That's an overflow mechanism. So piece of advice number four is bounds. As you set up a system, put boundaries on all of those numbers and gauges even if it's just a warning to you, the developer. And that way, even if your system runs amok, you can kind of limit the damage. Finding those bounds can be a question of experimentation. Piece of advice when experimenting. As you say, oh, pushing this button or doing this results in a change. Work on one number at a time because one number, the effect of it will spread. The bounds in World of Warcraft limit how fast monsters respawn. Too fast and players all will die, but too slow, and players will get bored. The bounds also limit the amount of gold you earn for killing a monster. Too much, and inflation will spiral out of control. Too little, and the game will become a boring grind. So work on one number. Make sure you've got bounds to keep it from going bananas. And if you're not sure what that number is doing, double it or have it. In fact, the, one of the most efficient ways to arrive at finding something out of a big spread is to keep cutting things in half and go, it's not in this half, it's in this half, it's in this half, right? So cutting and doubling is a very valuable tool for tuning these things. Graphs are extraordinarily useful when you are working on these systems. The things that you're going to be worried about in systems are often around the rate of change, not the fact that something changed. So it's very useful for you as a designer, as a developer, to be able to see rates of change. So give yourself dashboards that graph things over time so you can see how things moved and changed. Because just watching a single number is often not going to help you tune. You know, this is where some of those weirder Excel sheets come in handy, right? Like the uh, bubble plot, for example, is actually a very valuable one for looking at systems because most graphs show you two pieces of info at a time. A system, you know, will often involve three. So get comfy with bubble plots. You often end up needing them. For example, World of Warcraft has a developer dashboard that shows statistics like average session time, monthly active users, a number of raids and dungeons played per month. And the last thing again, just to circle back, make sure you're doing this all with an eye towards the user's intent. Any number you show, you're telling the user this is important. If it's a number that only ever goes up, that is a subliminal incentive to just make it go up. <laughs> and that might not be the behavior you want. Think about what you choose to expose because mantra inside the startup is you are what you measure. It turns out that's true for a user of anything. They become the numbers that you present to them. They shape their behavior around the feedback you give them. So think carefully about what you present back out and make sure it's in service of the user's actual goal. So there you have it. Raft's timeless principles of system design. In our game thinking programs, we help you leverage these principles and design systems for products in gaming, entertainment, healthcare, education, manufacturing, finance, and other areas. The details will vary, but the principles are always the same. If you want to learn more from RAF about system design, check out these videos right here. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos so we can get smarter together. I'll see you soon.